Hey everyone, it's Tyler. As of today, December 31st, Unify Protect 6.2 is out into the world. And so let's take a look at the blog post and then let's actually look at my cloud key and see what it's all about. Okay, here in the blog post, introducing Protect 6.2. Top of the list here is real-time system status at a glance. So you'll be able to look at the real-time bit rate of your cameras, but also if you have an AI key, you'll be able to see the latency on processing those detections. 6.2 introduces live status indicators that surface how the system is performing right now, not five minutes ago. Aggregate system bit rate for instant health checks, current viewer count across the deployment, and edge AI inference latency displayed in real time. Here in Protect on my cloud key, we can see this is the real-time bit rate. So this is combined bit rate of all camera streams sent to your console locally. So all the cameras, this is the bit rate that they are going over the network. And my cameras record all of the time. So essentially we're recording 35, 38, 40 megabits per second. Here's a site that has 37 cameras total, 31 of them are 4K. And right now you can see that current bit rate, 370 to about 300 megabits per second, depending on what's happening in the footage. But we can see here the edge AI latency. So our average latency is 10 seconds, max latency is 31 and a half seconds. And we can see on this graph how many detections were queued detections processed, and the average and max latency. So as you go throughout the day, you can see the detections. Looks like 133 detections between that time. Now I have noticed the AI key spot is gone. It used to show uh, your AI keys. I have three of them on this site. It used to show them around here, but I don't see them anymore. So. This graph is probably replacing that. Next, the granular admin permissions. So admin management has been rebuilt to give teams precise control without friction. Camera level permissions per administrator. Clear separation between management and view only rights. Easier delegation across large or distributed sites. And customized roles specific for your organization. Back on my cloud key here, if we go to admins and users, we can see the accounts I have on here. So if I click on this account and go to settings, now I'm able to choose what cameras this person has access to. So if I come to custom, I can now see all of the cameras and I can choose full management, view only, or none. Back when Unify Video was a thing that you could host on your own servers, this was built in and I liked it because I could give a person access to certain cameras, but if they didn't need the whole site, then I could choose that in settings. So I'm glad this is back. This is useful for me um, for sites that, let's say they have 40 cameras, the front receptionist only needs to see certain cameras. They don't need to see every single hallway, every single exit. They just need to see the cameras that pertains to their area. So now I'm able to choose if they have full management, or view only so that way they can't go back through footage and then of course none so they won't have access to that camera and looking here at the video that ubiquity has posted on their blog it looks like you can specify per device as well so you can select what uh, admins have control over what on every device and next we have the system log so it's showing cleaner and faster audit logs. System logs continue to mature with a focus on usability during investigations. Improved audit log filtering, faster review of access and configuration changes and reduced noise for clear forensic analysis. So logs was already great. They made huge improvements in 2025 and it looks like they're adding even more to it. So we can drill down by severity up here and then you've got all logs, detections for animals. So you can see person and animal detected in the backyard two times at this specific date and time. You can also do per device. So if I wanted to see doorbell light here, recording clips. So I opened a recent detection from the doorbell at this time. 
This is when I updated the camera today. Doorbell has recorded an animal two times, has recorded a vehicle six times. It showed that someone rang the doorbell at this time. So it's great that it keeps a whole history of everything that's happening with your system. You can also search by admins. If I come up here to audit, so now we can kind of audit like admin activity. So we can see the type here, accessed, protect access from the web. So that's me, I accessed Unified Protect from the web and gives you all of that uh, data as far as how long it was accessed for and the date. You can search by device settings, recording clips, system settings, and again, devices. So if we go to backyard, it shows that I opened up a recent detection. And uh, you can see in August, I updated the smart zone and then I opened up the recording settings. And you can see here, my pool stream looks like it was having uh, some issues and then it reconnected. I'm using an old M2 um, bridge for that from Ubiquity. So one day I'll get the device bridge out there in the barn uh, and that way the pool camera will uh, be a little bit more stable. Anyway, so that's uh, new logs. 6.2 introduces a new integrations framework for retail, starting with native support for Shopify and direct camera to point of sale terminal pairing. So essentially, if you use Shopify at a business, you can assign cameras to point of sale systems, and all of that will also be logged as well in Protect. And so if there's a transaction that you need to recall the footage for, you don't have to try to find the time that that happened. Um, you can simply go to that action in the logs and bring up that. And it looks like you can also do alarm manager for certain transactions. So if there's like a high dollar transaction and you want an alert for that, you should be able to set that up. Next, a smarter timeline experience. The timeline has been refined to add context and reduce time spent searching. Synchronized gallery view across cameras real-time weather context layered into playback and better situational awareness during review. So looking here at the video for the timeline, if you look closely on the left side, you'll see all of the cameras are moving in this timeline as the person is searching that timeline. So that way you'll be able to see everything going on. Let's play it again. So you'll be able to see everything that's going on on the cameras that are on the screen. Even though you're looking at one, you'll be able to look at all the other cameras and what's happening as well. And then now the time and weather is kind of baked into the footage. And so as you're replaying the footage, it will show the time, but also the weather at that specific time. Next, detection exclusion zones. New exclusion zones allow teams to ignore detections within defined regions of interest, allowing for reduced false positives and busy scenes, more accurate alerts where they matter, and simple configurations per camera. And we see here exclusion zone, ignore detections in this area used to suppress false positives or unnecessary alerts within a smart zone. So I'm trying to think through exactly what that means, because right now with smart detections, if I set up a zone, this is where I want it to detect, you know, people, vehicles, animals. But if I have an exclusion zone, it ignores detections in this area. So that's the opposite of what I have used to suppress false positives or unnecessary alerts within a smart zone. So really, it's the opposite of having a smart detection zone. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Um, how would it be useful to you? Am I missing something? Um, what's the benefit of having an exclusion zone? Let me know below. Finally, expanded PTZ controls and automation. 6.2 delivers a significant upgrade to PTZ behavior and automation. Home position configuration and auto return additional presets with reordering support and automatic resumption of auto tracking. Bringing my PTZ back up here. 
We got return to home presets. Yep, so we can reorder the presets if we want to. Patrols, auto tracking, mouse control. Okay, so let's look at the home feature. So return home, let's go to settings. Home view, okay. So auto return home after inactivity. So I'm glad to see this because before you really only had a few seconds. Um, once the motion ended, the PTZ would just return home. And so now the motion is out of view. So it looks like we can go 10 seconds up to 60 seconds. So typically with delivery drivers, the camera sees them, follows them to the front door. They put the package down, but then they get, grab their phone. They take a picture of the package and then they step off the porch. The camera has already returned home. So this will be nice. I can set it between 10 and 60 seconds. So let's do 18 there. A feature I really like and protect is multi-cam view. So if we come here to the bottom, we can choose multiple cameras. So here I've got my doorbell and my driveway. So we can view both of those at the same time. One feature I like with the newer equipment, the doorbell light and basically G5 and above, if it has person detection, uh, you can set it to where the PTZ will move over to the area that a person or animal is detected. I believe it works for vehicles as well. So I'm gonna step outside and show you in real time how this looks. Basically, I want this for if somebody comes up to the door from the left side of my property, the PTZ is not gonna catch it. But since I have the doorbell light up there, it'll detect a person and an alarm manager, I've told it to tell the PTZ to move to that side. So I'm gonna step outside and I'll show it to you. And I'm also going to walk around the driveway a little bit and see how the PTZ tracks me because it's supposed to have better tracking now. Okay, so I'm back in. My wife was asking me, what are you doing? Science. Anyway. Okay, so let's watch this back. I'm trying in high quality, but it seems to be buffering, so we're gonna do automatic. Okay, so as I'm coming out of the front door, doorbell detects a person, moves the PTC over, and then it tracks me. I am styling, that's for sure. So there we go. It's picking me up and it's starting to zoom in the further I walk away. That's pretty smooth. A little jittery there. Zoomed out, not quite sure why. But looks like we're going to zoom back in. So I decided to go ahead and go across the street and get the mail. I feel like it could zoom in more, but so far it's not. There we go. I think that zoomed in all the way. So it's still following me. Oh, there we go. Zoomed in a little bit more. I mean, that's great. That's super smooth. Wow. 
Okay, so the front door bell caught me, so it moved over to the position that I told it to go to when it sees a person on the front door. So that worked. So I went to the side of the building, waited for the camera to reset. And then I'm going to walk to the side of the building and you'll see me on the doorbell and then the PTZ should pick me up as well. So I'm in frame now and the PTZ moved over. So I think that looks really good. I think the new PTZ uh, behavior and automation is pretty good. And there you go. That is Ubiquiti's Unify Protect 6.2 update. It is in release candidate. So one note that I'll make after I did the update, I was having some stability issues with cameras dropping and then Protect was going into auto recovery mode. So I did stop Protect and restart it. And so far it seems stable. This does happen from time to time with updates from Ubiquity. And so if you are experiencing some weirdness after the update, you can either restart your whole cloud key, your dream machine, whatever you have protect running on, or you can just stop and restart protect on that unit. And it seems to be stable. I thank you all for checking out my video. If you haven't subbed, please consider doing that. I'm hoping 2026 is going to be a big year again for Ubiquity and for tech in general, and I plan to make some more videos. So thank you all, and I'll see you on the next one.